personal injury and workers' comp cases, but most of them send their assistants to do the legwork. You might not even meet your attorney until your first hearing. We're local attorneys, Davis and Davis. We meet directly with our clients, including free consultation, and there are no fees until you receive money on your case. If you've been injured, call Davis and Davis, representing you and your neighbors yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Call 724-437-2799. Back here at Mustang Field, the Laurel Highlands Mustangs hosting the Thomas Jefferson Jaguars high school boys soccer tonight here on the South Union Township Sports Network. Expecting a good one, Laurel Highlands 9-1 overall, 7-1 out of Section 3 and 3A. Jerry Rogers in his eighth year as the head coach of the Laurel Highlands Mustangs. Thomas Jefferson, not a shabby record either, 8-1-2 overall. 5-1-2 and two in conference play. Dr. Mike Kulish now in his 29th year as the head coach of the Thomas Jefferson Jaguars. Laurel Highlands gained control of the Section 3A lead with a 3-1 win over Bell Vernon on Monday. Thomas Jefferson and Trinity played to a 2-2 draw on Monday as well. And looking at the conference standings right now, you have the Mustangs at the top of the table sitting at 7-1. and one. Thomas Jefferson not too far behind at 5-1-2. and two. Bell Vernon sitting at 5-2. and two. Trinity at 4-2-2. Two and two. Those would be your four playoff teams if the postseason got underway right now. Ringgold still in the race at 3-5. and five. Washington at 2-5. and five. Albert Gallatin at 2-6. And, and the Uniontown Red Raiders still looking for their first conference win of the season. They sit at 0-6. This is a rematch of a September 9th meeting between these two schools. That was a game won by Laurel Highlands over Thomas Jefferson by a one to nothing margin, and that was the Jags' only conference loss so far this season. Should be a very competitive game tonight between two teams that actually met in the WPIL quarterfinals back in 2016. We'll now turn it over to our public address announcer for tonight's starting lineups. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Laurel Highlands High School and Mustang Field for this evening's boys soccer match between the Jaguars from Thomas Jefferson and your Laurel Highlands Mustang. Starting lineup for Thomas Jefferson Jaguars. At midfield, the senior, number 35, Luke Geiger. Midfield, senior, number six, Michael Googie. On defense, a senior, number two, AJ Getze. A forward, senior, number eight, Jordan Chiprich. On defense, a senior, number four, Billy Marshall. Midfielder, senior, number 12, Aiden Moody. In goal, a senior, number 50, Alex Day. On defense, a junior, number 11, Robbie Shoemaker. Midfielder, junior, number 5, Andre Bekovac. On defense, a sophomore, number 18, Robert Kisner. And at forward, a sophomore, number seven, Anthony Orlando. Jaguars are led by Dr. Michael Coolish, and head coach, assistant coaches, Michael Coolish III, Rob Shoemaker, and Brian Thatcher. And now, starting lineup for your Laurel Highlands Mustang.
midfielder, senior, number three, Joey Lominski. In goal for the Mustangs, sophomore, number nine, Thatcher Wilson. On defense, a senior, number 11, Ben Diamond. A midfielder, sophomore, number 14, Tim Lasik. A four, senior, number 16, Matt Lucas. A forward, senior, number 22, Nico John. Midfielder, junior, number 25, Harry Radcliffe. On defense, a junior, number 30, Ian Hamilton. And on defense, the senior, number 33, Carson Seaman. All stakes are led by Harry, head coach Jerry Rogers, assistant coach Jerry Rogers Jr., assistant coach Josh Naren, assistant coach Denny Marzano, and assistant coach Vernon Chandler. At this time, we would ask that everyone arise and gentlemen remove your caps for the playing of our national anthem. Just about set to go here at Laurel Highlands High School. The Mustangs hosting the Thomas Jefferson Jaguars, one of four Section 3 3A matchups scheduled for tonight. Bell Vernon also in Fayette County tonight at Albert Gallatin. Ringgold at Washington and Uniontown at Trinity this evening. Mentioned Laurel Highlands 9-1 overall, 7-1 in conference play. The Mustangs riding a seven-game winning streak. Laurel Highlands only lost so far this season back on September the 11th at Bell Vernon. Two to nothing, but the Mustangs avenged that loss with a three to one win over the Leopards this past Monday. On the Thomas Jefferson side, just one loss on the season. That was to Laurel Highlands back on September the 9th by a one to nothing decision. They do have two draws, both of those draws coming against Trinity, one to one at Trinity on September the 7th, and then they drew this past Monday as well by a score of two to two. And you look at this. Thomas Jefferson program consistency year in and year out. In fact, they have qualified for the WPI all playoffs every year going all the way back to 2013, the last year they missed out. And you look at these two schools, you actually have 
father and son combinations as head coaches and assistant coaches. Of course, the Mustangs coached by Jerry Rogers, senior assisted by Jerry Rogers, Jr. Dr. Michael Kulish in his 29th year as the head coach of the Thomas Jefferson Jaguars and his son, Michael Kulish III, one of the assistants on this Thomas Jefferson team. And there you get a look at both Jerry Rogers Sr. and Jerry Rogers Jr. there on the Mustang bench. Younger Jerry to your left, Jerry Sr. to your right. And the Mustang set to go in the center circle. Look there at Nico Johns. We'll get this match underway. Laurel Highlands working left to right as we describe it here in the first half. Both of these teams playing 4-4-2s today. The sophomore Thatcher Wilson in goal for Laurel Highlands. The senior Alexander Day in goal for the Thomas Jefferson Jaguars. Mustangs in the home reds. Blue shorts, white trim, Thomas Jefferson the away, whites with gold numbers, and we're underway with the Mustangs. Caleb Yanoski with some early control actually deflected off of Anthony Orlando as the Jags are able to get possession of the ball, working down the far side. A little touch ahead there from Jordan Chiprich on the Mustang back line, or Ian Hamilton will send it back to Thatcher Wilson, who looked to blast it away, but headed along there by Thomas Jefferson to keep it in the zone there as Luke Geiger got a piece of it. And the Mustangs knock it down again with Ben Diamond on the back line trying to play it forward. And there was Robert Shoemaker for Thomas Jefferson getting a little possession back. Again, both of these teams with solid regular seasons so far. 9-1 and one Laurel Highlands, 8-1-2 and two Thomas Jefferson. And the Jags needing a win here to still have a shot at the section title. And they almost got it there right on the doorstep, the cross. They couldn't touch it home. Well set up out in front of Thatcher Wilson. He would have likely been beat there as the Jags getting some early pressure. Just over a minute in. And the Mustang keepers, Thatcher Wilson and Luke Simpson, have combined on six clean sheets already this season. The Mustang team record from Soup Campbell a couple of years back had 10 shutouts for the Mustangs. It's still a lot of soccer to play, but Jacob Soup Campbell, 10 shutouts alone, going back a few seasons for the Laurel Highlands Mustangs. A little touch back there from Seaman to Thatcher Wilson and played out on the far side again to Ben Diamond. And Diamond feeling the pressure as the Jags get the ball back, a little cross out in front of one hopper, going back to Thatcher Wilson again for Laurel Highlands, and he'll send it out on the far side. There's Tim Lasick. Back to Wilson as the Mustangs try to work out of their own zone. The Jags have had the better of the ball here in the opening two minutes. And it'll be William Marshall to bounce it in here on a throw-in. Play it off to his left. Harry Radcliffe there for the Mustangs going shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder with Anthony Orlando for the Thomas Jefferson Jaguars. The Jaguars' leading goal scorer coming in is Michael Googie with nine goals and eight assists. Also got nice numbers from Orlando, Jordan Chiprich, along with Luke Geiger. And Laurel Highlands trying to spring Oliveris down on the near side. And the Jags take the safe route, sending it out. And Manny will send it back in here on a quick throw-in. Looking there for Lucas, back to Manny, outside the box. Went through Harry Radcliffe. And Harry trying to regain there, trying to work around Jordan Chiprich. A little shot just going wide there of the keeper, Alexander Day. And the Jags will have a goal kick. Three minutes in. And the Jags unbeaten in their last seven games. Lost against Laurel Highlands back on September the 9th. Blasted out by Day. Knocked down there by Googie. And sent back on the Jags' front line. The Mustangs' Carson Seaman will send it back to Thatcher Wilson. And ben Diamond there. Feeling a little pressure. Double team around him. Googie there along with Robert Shoemaker. And Googie able to win the ball. Trying to cross it out in front there for Chiprich. Mustangs knock it away. Forward to Matt Lucas. Trying to work around Luke Geiger. Jags knock it down. There you see Joey Lomanski there for Laurel Highlands. As Andrew Getze will dribble it up there for Thomas Jefferson. The Jags lost their top player coming into the season in a 
scrimmage game against Cannon McMillan, Marshall Richter, who actually did not play high school soccer a season ago for TJ, played for the Cincinnati Academy after playing for the Jags during his sophomore year, and TJ expecting big things out of Richter, but he was injured in a scrimmage and out for the rest of the season. Jags stepping up here with a nice little run and a deflection going back to the keeper, Thatcher Wilson. And those Jags away jerseys, a little tough to pick up with those yellow numbers on the white jerseys. Be challenging for me throughout the course of the evening. We're going to identify the Jags players as quickly as we like. We apologize, doing the best we can, given the circumstances here this evening. It's lobbed in here on the near side, and Carson Seaman sending it back there for the Mustangs. We'll push up the field there, touched by Chiprich. Sent forward here to Anthony Orlando. Orlando, a nice run. Sidestepping a Mustang, staying with the top of the box. Orlando is shot, and Thatcher Wilson with a cover there for Laurel Highlands. We mentioned Orlando coming in, six goals and four assists so far this season for Dr. Michael Kulish's squad. Manny Oliveras trying to work down the near wing. little contact there. I think that was... Thomas Jefferson's trying to get a number on that. 18 there. Michael, check that, Robert Kisner. The foul called on the Mustangs. It'll be Chiprich taking the free kick here coming back. Chiprich with a nice boot, top of the 18-yard box. Headed there by Radcliffe and getting pushed down on the play there was Tim Lasick. Should be a free kick here for the Mustangs. It will. 33-54 left here in the first half. Prime Rozak alongside Jerry Dupe. Nice to have you along with us for high school soccer here on the South Union Township Sports Network. Jags have had more of the ball here early on. And another run here from Chiprich who collides there with Harry Radcliffe. Appear that Chiprich initiated the contact. And Laurel Highlands will have another free kick here from Carson Seaman. Carson with a little chip here on the near side. Headed out by the Jags. Matt Lucas working back in here for Laurel Highlands. Looking for Oliveris. Harry Radcliffe there. Has it knocked out by Robert Kisner. And Caleb Yanoski will take this throw in. Send it into the box. Oliveris knocks it down. A little pressure from the Jags. Radcliffe trying to keep it alive, but it's TJ on the counterattack coming back. Numbers favor Laurel Highlands. And a good job there from Joey Lemansky to slow down the rush. Sent down on the far side there to Aiden Mohedon. And Mohedon was ruled over the far touch line and out. So will be a throw in here for Laurel Highlands. Haven't seen a substitution on either side so far. The Mustangs, six seniors, three juniors, and two sophomores, and they're starting 11 today with Oliveras and Nico Johns on the front line. Joey Lomanski, Tim Lasik, Matt Lucas, and Harry Radcliffe in the midfield with Caleb Yanoski, Ben Diamond, Ian Hamilton, and Carson Seaman on the back line, and Thatcher Wilson in goal. And getting tripped up there is Matt Lucas, and the Mustangs will have a free kick here from about 30 yards from goal. A foul committed there by Robert Shoemaker. They'll put it down here. 29 yards from goal will be Harry Radcliffe to take the free kick. Three-man wall set up there by the Jags. This will be the best scoring opportunity of the night so far for Laurel Highlands. So Radcliffe takes it a little chip. Mustangs looking for it out in front. Lucas is there and able to pull the trigger. Ball still loose. And the Jags able to send it out here on the near side. And they'll try to break back here on the near side. A little playback there from Orlando to Chiprich. And the Mustangs, Harry Radcliffe getting back into the play. Over to Oliveris. A little leave back in Harry's direction, trying to keep it alive. Manny steps in, helps out, got around Kisner, sends it over to Lucas, top of the box. Again, fanned on the shot attempt. And the jab, Jags, excuse me, chip it back to Anthony Orlando with a little bit of open space. Lemansky coming back defensively. Orlando sends it off to his left as Thomas Jefferson works it up the field. Down on the near wing. 
And sent in deep there to Andrew Bekovac. The play whistled down. The TJ supporters don't like the calls. Laurel Highlands will have a free kick coming back. A little push-off call there on Bekovac. Now maybe not. Laurel Highlands thought they had the kick. And the foul does go on the Mustangs. And Jordan Chiprich will take this for the Jags. Everybody was going the other way. And Chiprich will take the kick. A little header on the far side. Mustangs send it out. Should be a throw in here for Thomas Jefferson. Naden Mohedon come over on that far side, likely to take the throw in. Jags will switch up personnel here. That'll be Raymond Shrello who just checked in, taking the throw in. Carson Seaman skies it there for the Mustangs. Jags get possession back momentarily there in front of the Laurel Highlands bench. LASIK trying to push it up the field. Ball goes off of TJ and out. Yeah, throw in here for Ben Diamond. Trying to play it back to Radcliffe in traffic. Jags pick it up again off a of deflection. Mustangs find it and try to Send it forward down on the far side. Played back in some traffic there to Lemansky over to Matt Lucas. And the Jags now work back again on the counterattack. A little sidestep coming forward there from Chiprich, and the Mustangs knock it down. Played back ahead there from William Marshall. Going through Ben Diamond and out. And another throw in here for Laurel Highlands taken by Ben Diamond. 28-44 left here in the first half. This match still scoreless. You mentioned it was a defensive struggle the first time these two teams met. The difference, the Laurel Highlands one to nothing win. They've had success bringing Lucas and Johns on some of the through balls. And for the most part, TJ's back line has kept that in check so far tonight. The throw in here from Ben Diamond over to Joey Lomansky. A little pressure again from Chip Rich. And Jags able to spin it back again. Shrello pushing it up the field. Low ball. They're trying to get it in Googie's direction. And the Mustangs play it back to Thatcher Wilson. You know, blast here on the near side. Overall, Averis. Manny tries to get back into it. Jags knock it out of play. Should be the Mustangs' ball here from the near side. They go quickly here. Caleb Yanoski sent it over all of Eris. And Googie comes back, pushing it up the field here for the Jags. Up to Chiprich, leading the run back, trying to get around Hamilton. And the Mustangs knock it down and for the moment send it back to center. But again, Thomas Jefferson getting possession. All of Eris, a little block there. Now they're working into the box. Look out here, Thatcher Wilson way out, trying to knock it away there from Shrello. Shrello trying to regain in the corner. Will touch off to his right there again to Chiprich. Laurel Highlands again looking for a clear, and they'll push it up here to Nico Johns. Johns able to work out of his own zone. Might have been a handball there as William Marshall trying to work it back up to Chiprich. And the Mustangs will have a free kick coming back here from Ben Diamond. And I have to thank some of the Laurel Highlands boosters. Send some food up in our direction from the concession stand. We appreciate that. Brian Morozak alongside Jerry Dupe. Busy week of high school soccer here on the South Union Township Sports Network. Boys with a 3-1 win over Bell Vernon Monday. Girls a huge win over Uniontown yesterday. The girls are back in action against Bell Vernon tomorrow night before we have the big football showdown on Friday from James Weir Stadium in Bell Vernon between 5-0 Laurel Highlands and 4-0 Bell Vernon. The boys' soccer team back here at Mustang Field on Saturday. Nick Barczak will bring you the action between Laurel Highlands and Trinity. So a lot going on this week. Busy week of sports here on the South Union Township Sports Network. Sent down to Nico Johns. Working it out of the zone now. William Marshall. Touch there from Luke Geiger. 
Going low and forward here on the run. Orlando got a piece of it with a head of steam. Look out here at Trello breaking into the box. Hamilton defending. And a good job defensively there from Ian Hamilton to slow down the run from the sophomore forward, Raymond Shrello, for Bell Vernon, who's provided some fresh legs. Checked into the match at around the 30-minute mark, 10 minutes into the first half. He's had a couple of opportunities already and has it again on the corner. Shrello working deep. Diamond fronting him. Shrello a little touch back again there to Chiprich. Mustangs Lacey getting a piece of it. Chiprich trying to circle it back. And Oliveras a block there on Luke Geiger. And Nico Johns now trying to work out of the Mustang zone. Johns on the near side. Pass was intended for Harry Ratcliffe. Got broken up by William Marshall. Now Thomas Jefferson resetting from their own zone. Lob back ahead. Controlled there again by Hamilton. And Ian losing possession. Chiprich back into the play there for Bell Vernon. Over to Michael Googie with a nice little leave. And Thatcher Wilson able to scoop it up. With some pressure bearing down. And play just over 15 minutes. There's Nico having it knocked away again. Radcliffe tried to step in. And controlled there by Caleb Janoski. On the push up to Lemansky, down the field to Matt Lucas. Good run here for the Mustangs as Oliveras off to his right. Will keep it himself, take a blast, and send it into the back of the nets. So Matt Lucas is 10th of the season. The Jags have controlled much of the ball here in the first half, but Lucas scoring here at the 24-15 mark of the first half to give Laurel Highlands a one to nothing lead. So a great counterattack by Laurel Highlands, and Lucas gets his 10th of the year. And the Mustangs lead it one to nothing. Sometimes it doesn't matter how much of the ball you control. Get it right place, right time, and Lucas has been deadly inside the 18-yard box so far this season for Laurel Highlands. Here's Carson Seaman out of his own zone. A little header there from Lemansky, feeling the pressure from Chiprich. And the play whistled down. They might get Lemansky here. They will. And we'll see if TJ can answer back. They saw the Mustangs concede one to Bell Vernon on Monday after scoring the opening goal of the match. But Laurel Highlands coming back with two unanswered for a 3-1 win on Monday. Now a free kick taken here by Chiprich with a good lob just going wide here on the near side. They had Michael Googie right on the doorstep. And Wilson will take it here for another goal kick. I have to thank the folks checking in on the live stream. Billy Dice, Caroline Hevener, Bobby Ruggieri, Amanda Lehman, James Hersick, and Randy Miller with a big goal call there for Matt Lucas. Thank you for watching this evening. As the Mustangs look to really gain control of the section. A little chip out in front. Wilson gave up the rebound and the Jags tie it. And that is Michael Googie. And that's his 10th of the season. So Michael Googie, we talked about him during the pregame show. Thomas Jefferson Sr. knots things up at one as Wilson gave up a rare rebound there for Laurel Highlands and Googie makes the score one to one. Jags bringing a lot of supporters down tonight as well. Alexander Day with a high lob there on the goal kick. Headed there by Lasik. Mustangs knock it down. 
Lemanski a chip. Nico Johns on the run. They're going to get Johns for a little push, sending down one of the Jags defenders trying to break into the box. That was Andrew Getze that went down on the play there for Thomas Jefferson. So Googie and Lucas, the goal scorer so far. And this match tied at one. Nice little body there over to Oliveris. The Mustangs trying to chase it down. Good defense again from Thomas Jefferson and Manny. Take the throw in quickly here to Lucas. Back in Manny's direction. Jags again pick up possession there with Andrew Bekovac. Trying to lead the rush up. Seaman a little touch back there for Laurel Highlands. Joey Lemansky getting on it there for the Mustangs. Almost went down trying to regain his step and played back over to Bekovac again for the Jags. Playing catch there with Googie. We'll send it back in Wilson's direction. We'll send it out on the far side. Mustangs body it down. And lobbed on the Jags back line there to Robert Kisner. Over to Googie, feeling the pressure there from Radcliffe. Which way is this one going to go? And Harry Radcliffe's going to be whistled for the foul. Mustang supporters not liking that call. Laurel Highlands had a couple, a couple of those tight calls going against them so far in this match. And the Jags' Jordan Chiprich. A free kick coming back. And a good blast. This will go out of play off of Laurel Highlands. And it will be a... Corner kick here for the Jags. And correction, that was Andrew Getze that took the free kick there for Thomas Jefferson. And it looks like it will be Chiprich taking this corner kick. So Chiprich will take the corner. Jags making a change on the far side. Here's Chiprich with the lob. Mustangs trying to head it out. That was Caleb Janoski knocking it down. Goes out of play. And reloading there, Andre Bekovac. And Janoski, a partial fan there on the clearing attempt, will be another throw in for Thomas Jefferson. Chiprich trying to lead this one back. Was bodied there by Robert Kisner. Oliveris. The refs are going to. Whistle this one down for a dangerous play as Oliveras got the spikes up on the clearance attempt. You'll see that call all the time. Andrew Getze from 41 yards out will take this free kick. Getze a good lob, and it actually hit the crossbar loose out in front, and you had Googie on the doorstep. And somehow the Mustangs kept that one out. That was a great take from 41 yards out there from Getze. And Googie almost scored there as the ball went off the crossbar. What do we have going on here? Ref's talking it over. Are they going to put it down here for a penalty kick? Referees still getting together, talking it over. Called for an official's timeout. Ball went off the crossbar. Now, maybe the, direct, the discussion might be, when it hit the crossbar, did it go over initially and out of play and touch the netting above the crossbar before the rebound came back? Nonetheless, they're going to award a corner kick here to Thomas Jefferson. Once again, Chipperich takes it. Another nice high lob on the far side. Mustangs trying to head it out. Nico Johns and Oliveris there, and Manny able to clear. Laurel Highlands with all 11 there in the box defensively. Trying to protect the goal. Lemanski over to Nico Johns. 
Trying to send it out to the far side. Lucas picking up possession there for Laurel Highlands. Googie there for the Jags. And Thomas Jefferson regaining possession again. Carson Seaman playing it back in Thatcher Wilson's direction. They're adding a little pressure there on Wilson. Sends it back over to Seaman. And the Jags playing a high-tempo game today, and Yanoski turns it over. Googie coming back. Look out here for the Jags. A little cross out in front. Sent down. Low shot into the back of the net there from Jordan Chiprich. And the Jags take a 2-1 to -one lead. Googie gets the assist. Chiprich the goal. And the Jags take a 2-1 to -one lead here at the 17-16 mark of the first half. Well set up by Googie, who now has a goal and an assist so far tonight. And Thomas Jefferson, who has controlled much of the ball in this match. And for Chiprich, that's his seventh of the season. For Googie, that's his ninth assist. And the Jags now a 2-1 lead, and now Laurel Highlands must play from behind. We talked about the importance of of this matchup, Laurel Highlands 7-1 in conference play. Thomas Jefferson 5-1-2. If Thomas Jefferson would pick up the win, they'd go to 6-1-2. And, and Laurel Highlands would drop to 7-2 in the conference. You'd have the Mustangs still one up in the win column. But the Jaguars with one fewer loss. Thomas Jefferson two draws. Again, both of those coming against Trinity. Mentioned the busy week for Laurel Highlands as well. Mustangs playing University High in a non-conference game tomorrow before hosting Trinity on Saturday. That's four games in a six-day period. That's a lot of soccer to play in a short span of time. And I mentioned it on Monday. Still very surprised to have that non-conference game on a Thursday during a very busy week of conference games, especially among the other three top teams in the conference that's going to be offsides. As that one came in front of Thatcher Wilson. Now the Mustangs a free kick coming back in Oliveris' direction. Jags play it back down there to Googie. You can see why he's Thomas Jefferson's leading scorer so far this season. Jags another nice rush here and a low shot. And Thatcher Wilson barely keeping that one out as Chiprich almost had his second of the match. And the Mustangs have to try to find a way to get a little more of the ball here tonight. It's a... Thomas Jefferson's had about a 65-35 percentage difference, but Lucas Sprung coming back, and he got nailed in the box, and that'll be a penalty kick. Penalty kick up coming for Lucas and the Mustangs. As Lucas got nailed from behind on a nice run inside the 18-yard box, that was Andrew Getze that clipped him. And Laurel Island's an opportunity here to knot things up at two, and they'll put it on the dot 12 yards out. And Lucas will take it, already has one tonight. Maybe looking for number two here on the spot. Senior versus senior. Lucas against Alexander Day. Penalty kick coming here at the 15-03 mark of the first half. Here we go, Lucas versus Day. Here's Matt with the run-up. And he'll send it into the back of the net to tie things up at two. So Matt Lucas with the penalty kick at the 15-03 mark of the first half. That's his 11th of the season. And this match now tied at two. So back and forth soccer tonight. It was 1-0 the first time these two squads met. And already 2-2 here, less than 25 minutes in. And the Jags get things restarted. Here's Googie again on the near side. 
Little touch back off there to Robert Kisner. Radcliffe knocking it away there from Raymond Shrello. Over to Lomansky. Getting back on it there, Anthony Orlando. Trying to push it off there to Luke Geiger. And the Jags on the ball. Up there to Chiprich. He's been very involved. Orlando, another touch to Googie, top of the box. Cleared out by Carson Seaman. But not all the way out. And Lucas finally getting some possession. Goes between defenders on the near side. Over to Oliveris. There's Oliveris going to get called for a foul. Slide tackle attempt got awry. And the Jags will have a free kick coming back. And there was no card, by the way, issued on the Lucas penalty kick foul inside the 18-yard box. Had a couple of folks asking about it on our live stream. No card was shown. Now Getze will take this free kick. Another nice lob. Thatcher Wilson gave up the rebound on the doorstep. The wall blocked the shot there from Chiprich. Jags still buzzing, and it'll go wide on the far side. It's all kinds of pressure inside the Mustangs' defensive zone. It'll be another corner kick here for Jordan Chiprich. Chiprich will take it on the near post. Was headed there by Geiger, still bouncing around inside the box. Harry Radcliffe a header, sent back there from Googie, but not out. On the far side once again is Chiprich, feeling the pressure there from Radcliffe. You also have Aiden Mohit in there on the Jag side. Ball finally pushed out of bounds off of Thomas Jefferson and out. And Ben Diamond will send it back in over in Hamilton's direction. And now Ben again trying to work it down the far touch line. Ball will go out of play. Stay here with the Mustangs. Cooper Hunt's a new entry into the match for Laurel Highlands will take the throw in. Hunt will send it in to Joey Lomansky. He will push it forward down the far side. And roll back here to Alexander Day. Day will take the blast. Goes over to Googie. Settled it off there to Robert Shoemaker. Pushed ahead here on the run. You had Mohedon trying to break down on the far side for Thomas Jefferson. Never got his way. And here's Laurel Highlands again on the counterattack with Matt Lucas. Lucas now looking for the hat trick. Lucas, another nice run slide tackle in the box. Where's the foul? Where's the foul? As Lucas got taken down again. That time by Shoemaker. Where is the foul? Are they going to put it down now? I didn't see it called. And they are going to put it down. It is a penalty kick. Didn't see it called initially. And it is going to be a foul. And Matt Lucas looking for the hat trick now on the penalty kick with 11-28. Left here in the first half. Lucas looking for a second penalty kick goal of the night. It was deflected. And what a save by Alexander Day. So Day denying Lucas on the penalty kick. Rare to see Lucas stopped on the PK, but give Day a lot of credit for the PK save at the 11:28 mark of the first half. Mustangs would have easily taken a 3-2 lead there. And a foul call there on Oliveris. Wow. Mustangs seem poised. Didn't see the foul called initially, and then it was posted, and you thought this is going to be routine for Matt Lucas, but a big save from Alexander Day in this match, staying at 2-2. Two two. That could be a turning point. We'll see if Laurel Highlands can keep the pressure on, and it's sent down to Cooper Hunt. Hunt in the corner and taking the safe route there, William Marshall for Thomas Jefferson. And here's Lomansky again. Had it knocked away and sent back down the field. 
Ian Hamilton back defensively, and Wilson came out. It got deflected and just went wide. Wow. Back of the net was empty. Mustangs fortunate there. And it just deflected wide here on the near side. As we go under 10 minutes, left in a very busy first half. Four goals scored. One penalty kick save. And I have to thank our live stream sponsors, including the Sprouse Insurance Group and insurance agent David Hughes, United Bank. And a little header there from Lucas trying to keep it alive. Look out here. Matt Lucas still looking for the HT in the box. Got tripped up again. Nothing called this time. Might have just been feet that got tangled up there. And we'll keep it going. And Oliveris, was he the last to touch it? And they're going to say it went off of Thomas Jefferson's Andrew Getze. Mustangs take a quick throw in. A little header there for Mojita, knocked down by Hunt. Hunt looking for a little help. And the Mustangs with a little lob that'll just go wide of Alexander Day. Again, mentioning our sponsors, the Sprouse Insurance Group and Agent David Hughes, United Bank, Davis and Davis Attorneys at Law, Smith Lewis Chess CPAs in Uniontown, Jason Scott, South Union Township Supervisor, Southwestern Gastrointestinal Specialist, SWGI in Uniontown, Zebley Mahalovin White, Uniontown Business and Bankruptcy Attorneys, UPMC Centers for Rehab Services on Whalen Smith Drive, Jim Burns Director, South Union Township Supervisors, Robert Schiff, Bauer, Rick Vernon, and Jason Scott, and Chessler's Fine Furniture, Pittsburgh Road, in front of the Fayette Plaza, where customers send their friends. Lucas across, out in front of the chip, and score it there for Nico Johns. Lucas with the assist, and Johns might have healed that one home. And Laurel Highlands this time on top for sure by a 3-2 score. Goal coming here at the, three, at the 827 mark of the first half. For Nico Johns, that's his 10th of the season. And for Matt Lucas, that'll be assist number eight. So Johns from Lucas coming here at the 827 mark of the first half. And now Laurel Highlands on top 3-2. Certainly did not expect this much scoring coming in. Two heavyweights. And again, it was a 1-0 Mustang win earlier on this month down at Thomas Jefferson. You kind of had a little feeling out process over the first 10 minutes of this match. The opening goal of the match was scored by Lucas at the 24-15 mark of the first half. And you look at that penalty Kick save from Day it could very easily be 4 2 Laurel Highlands at this juncture of the match. But you had five goals scored over a 16 minute period between the two schools. Googie lost it. Jags keep it alive. And a little pressure as Laurel Highlands, certainly the momentum right now. Up 3 to 2. Oliveris flipping it back to Caleb Yanoski. Just left here on the near wing. Ball will trickle out of play. We mentioned the Laurel Highlands winning streak. They won seven in a row. Only lost this season back on September the 11th against Bell Vernon. This one whistled down. And there'll be a free kick here again for the Mustangs. Harry Radcliffe. We'll take this free kick, 28 yards out here on the near side. It's a two-man wall for TJ defensively. Radcliffe with a nice little lob. Jags headed back on the far side. Cooper Hunt trying to track it down there for the Mustangs. Go all the way back to midfield and then a roll over the far boundary and out. Will be Thomas Jefferson's ball here in front of the Mustang bench. With 6.30 left here in the first half. Good movement there from Chipperich. Boy, has he been dangerous. A little leave into the corner, cross going right to Thatcher Wilson on the attempt there from Raymond Shrello from the far side. He's also been very productive off the Jags bench. Wilson will roll it out to Caleb Yanoski, who blasted back down in Matt Lucas's direction. The Mustangs have been so successful on those spring plays so far this season. There's a look for a moment at Assistant coach Michael Kulish, the third, who's standing up. His dad uh, to the camera right, his left, Dr. Michael Kulish. 
on the Thomas Jefferson bench. And for Dr. Mike, his 29th year as Thomas Jefferson's head coach. That's a long tenure. And they've been one of the top programs around the WPIL year in and year out. A lot of success. Qualifying for the state playoffs back in 2018. Made it to the WPIL semis in 2016. Actually beat Laurel Highlands in that quarterfinal round match that year. Two to nothing. Played in the first round of the states in 2015 as well. You go back to 2008. Actually made it to the state semifinals. Hamilton slide tackle attempt didn't get the man. And on the cross, the blast. Wilson with the save on the shot taken there again from Shrello. But 08, the deepest penetration, at least over the last 15 to 20 years that the Jags have had in the WPIL playoffs. Susquehannock knocking TJ out of the states in the semifinals back in 2008. It was good to see that consistent success out of a program, and the Mustangs have been pretty solid as well. I mentioned the Jags haven't missed the postseason since 2013. The Mustangs haven't missed since 2015. In fact, that was the only year they've missed since 2012. Jerry Rogers Sr. and Jerry Rogers Jr. really have provided a lot of stability here at the Mustangs soccer program just to have that success year in and year out. Jerry Sr. now in his eighth year followed Zach Sipe and a tenure here at Laurel Highlands. will turn and shoot just going wide there again from Bekovac on the Thomas Jefferson side. 337 left here in the first half. Laurel Highlands a 3-2 lead. And a lot of action. Mentioned the four contenders atop the conference. Laurel Highlands, TJ, Bell Vernon, and Trinity. You also had Albert Gallatin that got off to a hot start. They've died out as Radcliffe with a nice little lob down here looking for Matt Lucas, but well defended that time by Thomas Jefferson's Andrew Getze. Really anchors the back line for the Jags. Chiprich. Sending it off on the far side again to Shrello and pushed out of bounds. And Shrello reloads over Cooper Hunt. Played back there to Luke Geiger. Now Shrello again going through Shrello and outs. Be a throw in here for the Mustangs and Ben Diamond. Over to Lomansky. It'll push forward to Lucas. Off to Manny Oliveris. And the Jags send it back to Carson Seaman on the Laurel Highlands defensive line. Up to Oliveris again, who couldn't knock it down. And we're down at 223. Left here in the first half of this one. Got a little bit of a late start. The officials were actually late for the junior varsity game. I don't think the varsity match started until about 5 to 8 tonight. A close match like this, don't be surprised if we have an extra session or two. Don't have the penalty kicks in the regular season, but you do have extra time periods. And again, the Jags were a part of that on Monday against Trinity. And very interesting that both of the games this year between the Jags and the Hillers have ended up in draws. And Laurel Highlands, who defeated Trinity one to nothing earlier on this season, will see the Hillers here at Mustang Field for a matinee on Saturday. We believe that's a 1.30 start. I did see a listing on one of the schedules of the game starting at noon, but the last we heard, Junior Varsity at 12, noon Varsity at 1.30. And Nick Barchak will have that matchup for you here on the South Union Township Sports Network. I have a little WMBS duty on Saturday with the Uniontown football game, so unfortunately I won't be here for that one, but I'll be Watching on my drive down as the Mustangs will be the third of three huge conference games at home this week for Laurel Highlands. And you look at the schedule the rest of the way. If they can pull out a win here, 
The table well set up for Laurel Highlands. They'll travel to Ringgold next week and then back at home for a game against the little Prexies of Washington we'll have here on the network for you next Thursday night at 7.30. And then a home match the following Monday against Albert Gallatin before playing Crosstown rival Uniontown the next day. And they'll also play a non-conference game before the WPIL playoffs get underway here at Mustang Field against Charleroi. There's Harry Radcliffe. From point blank range, sending it high, and it was deflected, so it will be a corner kick. Mustangs need to hurry. Down to 15 seconds left here before halftime. Nico Johns will put it down. Nico going short over to Lemansky with the cross out in front. Header! Oh! Just went wide there from Ian Hamilton. Thought Hamilton had it with a great header out in front. Just went wide to end the first half, but a great effort from both of these programs through 40 minutes of soccer. That's Laurel Highlands going to the locker room with a 3-2 lead, and we're back to recap the first half scoring for you in a moment here on the South Union Township Sports Network. Filing for bankruptcy is not something that anyone wants to do. Good people sometimes run into hard times, and they need help. Hi, I'm Dan White with the law offices of Zebley, Mahalab, and White, and I'm here to help. If you're faced with insurmountable debt and are out of options and you need help, give our office a call today. Allow us to help you understand your rights and options under the law. Filing bankruptcy is not the end of the road, and if you're struggling with debt, it very well could be a new beginning. So stop worrying and take action. Give our office a call today at 724-439-9200 or click on zeblaw.com for more information. Zebley, Mahalab, and White. Local attorneys helping local people. Let us help you fix your life. The key to success in life is teamwork. On and off the field, in the workplace, in the home, in our schools. Teamwork gets it done. The world of competitive sports offers many good things, the most important of which is teamwork. Individual talent may win a few games, but teamwork wins championships. Go team! Go Royal Highlands Mustangs! This positive message has been brought to you and paid for by Jason Scott. Personal injury can come in many forms. No matter what your injury, the attorneys at Davis & Davis will personally meet with you to discuss your case, just like we have over the last 40 years. Trust your case to a local, experienced legal team. Trust Davis & Davis. Chessler's Furniture at 601 Pittsburgh Street, Uniontown, has been in business since 1950 and has a wide variety of furniture for all of your needs. At Chessler's, they have a wide assortment of living room recliners, kitchen sets, bedroom mattresses, and accessories that can decorate your home for years to come. Shoes for many companies, including Lazy Boy, Best, King Hickory, Hammery, Lancer, Wildwood, Von Bassett, and White Dove. Chessler's also services what they sell. Stop into Chessler's Fine Furniture, Route 51 north of Uniontown, and see Kim, Christy, Ted, and Rich They'll be happy to help you with all of your needs. Chessler's Furniture, where customers send their friends. We would like to wish good luck this year to the Laurel Hines Mustang Boys Soccer Team and their coaches from the LH Boys Soccer Team Boosters. Back here at Mustang Field, a very busy first half. Five goals on the board. Got started with 
Matt Lucas getting his 10th of the season at the 24-15 mark to give Laurel Highlands a one to nothing lead. Michael Googie came back 90 seconds later getting his 10th of the year to tie the game up at one, and then Thomas Jefferson took the lead. Michael Googie with the pass over to Jordan Chiprich, and Chiprich with the finish at the 17-16 mark of the first half. And for Chiprich, that was his seventh goal of the season. Jags led by a score of 2-1. to one. Laurel Highlands tied it up on a penalty kick from Matt Lucas. Lucas getting the brace on that goal is 11th of the season at the 15.03 mark to make the score 2-2. Two to two. About four minutes later, Lucas again taken down inside the box, had a, another penalty kick opportunity that was saved by Alexander Day. But Laurel Highlands taking the lead, going to the locker room. Nico Johns with the goal, assisted by Matt Lucas, coming at the 827 mark of the first half to give Laurel Highlands the 3-2 lead. And that's where we sit at halftime for Johns. That was his 10th goal of the season as well. A reminder, our sponsors tonight include the Sprouse Insurance Group and Agent David Hughes, United Bank, Davis and Davis Attorneys at Law, Smith Lewis Chess CPAs in Uniontown, Jason Scott, South Union Township Supervisor, Southwestern Gastrointestinal Specialist, SWGI in Uniontown, Zebley Mahalov and White, Uniontown Business and Bankruptcy Attorneys, UPMC Centers Freehab Services on Wayland Smith Drive, Jim Burns Director, South Union Township Supervisors Robert Schiffbauer, Rick Vernon and Jason Scott, and Chessler's Fine Furniture, Pittsburgh Road, Uniontown in front of the Fayette Plaza, where customers send their friends. And if you're watching this replay on Atlantic Broadband or Armstrong Cable, I'd like to let you know that all of our games are now available live online. Just log on to Facebook.com slash South Union TV. Laurel Highlands girls also back in action again tomorrow night, hosting Bell Vernon. 7.30 start here on the network. Laurel Highlands girls 5-4 and four overall, 4-4 four and four in conference play, and they sit in a fourth place tie with Ringgold in the conference. That's a big game for the Lady Mustangs tomorrow night as well, and I think they'll be back to close to full strength for that matchup against the Leopards. Here from Mustang Field tonight, it's the Laurel Highlands boys three and the Thomas Jefferson Jaguars two. Second half match action comes your way next year on the South Union Township Sports Network. Are you tired of looking at the same old furniture day in and day out? Let Chesler's Fine Furniture work their magic. Chesler's offers the finest in name brand home furnishings by famous manufacturers. Plus, accent pieces that underline your unique sense of style, and they are all sale priced. There are living room suits by King Hickory, Lancer, Craftmaster, Lazy Boy, and Best Chair, each offering a distinct flair of comfort and design in many styles and fabrics, the largest selection of metal dinettes by Douglas, and dining sets in your choice of finishes and woods. Chesler's has exceptional bedding by White Dove and Imperial in your choice of size and firmness. Chesler's Fine Furniture also offers genuine Lazy Boy recliners and living room suits for pure relaxing comfort. In addition, you can count on Chesler's for friendly, courteous service, delivery, and layaway. Credit terms are available with up to six months the same as cat. Smith, Lewis, and Chess, CPAs of Uniontown, would like to wish the Law Highlands boys soccer team and their coaches on having a successful soccer season this year. MC Centers for Rehab Services on Wayland Smith Drive offers cutting-edge physical therapy. Jim Burns and his staff are residents of the community, treating sports injuries, neurological conditions, back pain, sprains and strains, joint replacements, hand injuries, and other conditions. They treat you efficiently and safely by taking all necessary precautions while disinfecting the clinic regularly. All insurance accepted. Experienced therapists. Convenient location and hours. Part of the community. Call the office with a prescription from your doctor or schedule by direct access 724-437-7500. This is Dr. Fraser Stokes. Fatty liver affects 30% of Americans and is a leading cause of cirrhosis and liver cancer. Risk factors for fatty liver include alcohol abuse, obesity, diabetes, and high blood pressure. At SWGI, our board-certified gastroenterologists, Dr. Ruthart, Calabrese, Hoppy, and I specialize in the care of fatty liver. Call 
1-800-437-7677 or visit swgispecialists.com. Are you getting collection calls, finding bills in the mail you can't pay? Are you expecting shutoff or foreclosure notices? If you're in financial trouble, you need to know that there is help under the law that will help protect you and your assets. Hi, this is attorney Chuck Zebley with Zebley Mahalo and White. Allow us to help you protect yourself. If you're in debt and have no way out, let us help you understand your options under the federal bankruptcy laws. Filing bankruptcy is not the end of the road. For many, it's a fresh start and a new beginning. So give our office a call today, 724-439-9200. Or visit our website at zeblaw.com. Zebley, Mahalov & White in Uniontown. Local attorneys helping local people. Let us help you fix your life. Zebley, Mahalov & White. It's gonna be all, it's gonna be all right. Back here at Mustang Field, five goals in the first half. And we'll get the second half started. Jags now working left to right. As we describe it as Anthony Orlando. We'll push it off to his right. Over to William Marshall. Ball goes out of play for Laurel Highlands throwing. First half that saw five goals being scored. Joey Lemansky a little touch ahead. Down to Manny Oliveras as they try to spring Nico Johns down the near side. Jags send it out. Ben Diamond to take this throw in. Going down to Nico's double teams. Lemansky sending it ahead. Bodied there by Matt Lucas. Teams exchanging headers back and forth. And the Jags a nice little chip down the near side. With control there, Chiprich. They sent it off to his left. Lemansky regaining control there for the Mustangs. Chiprich coming back into the play there for Thomas Jefferson again. Push up there from William Marshall. There's Googie. Try to work to his left. Mustangs deflected back. Tim Lasick. Carson Seaman skying it high. And Lucas trying to add a little pressure here on the Jags' back line. Andrew Getze doing a nice job there to slow things down. Radcliffe slide tackle attempt. A little push up to Oliveris. Mustangs trying to lead the counter. Manny in front of the Laurel Highlands bench. Googie with another intercept. Turn back off here on the near side. Over to Diamond, going low. Pass intercepted. Jags trying to push it up, went through Anthony Orlando. A lot back there from Shoemaker. Going to the corner, Orlando with a little pushback. Across out in front, went through Googie. Body, body down there by Chiprich and then sent high. And it was off of Thomas Jefferson going out, so it will be a goal kick here for Laurel Highlands. Thirty-seven ten. Left here in regulation time. And the Mustang lead still at three to two. Lasik's going to get called for a foul here for the Mustangs. Jags will have a free kick. This will be Chiprich to take it. They're going to push him back a little bit. He's about 45 yards from goal. Chiprich a nice blast. Header out in front into the back of the net. And we're tied at three. Get some confirmation here as who scored it there on the Thomas Jefferson side. And looks like it was Jordan Chiprich. 
So Jordan Chiprich getting his second of the night in this match tied at three. Now eight goals for Chiprich this season. This one coming at the 36-28 mark of the second half. To tie things up now at three. Now Laurel Highlands will have to get on the move here in the second half. Chiprich and Googie have certainly been the two forces on the Thomas Jefferson side as far as the scoring department is concerned. Chiprich a pair of goals, Googie a goal and an assist. This one rolled back to Thatcher Wilson again. Matt Lucas on the far side. And a good run here for Matt. Stepping in there was William Marshall, knocking it out of play. This one lobbed in Nico John's direction, and Alexander Day with the cover. You would have told me coming in that either one of these teams would have scored three goals. Would have said, hey, there's your winner. We have three on the board on each side. And still 35 minutes of regulation time left. Ball pinballing around. Jags with possession. Googie again. Sending it down on the near wing. Defending there is Diamond. Anthony Orlando trying to have the pressure on. Mustangs clear it out. Off a deflection, Lasik goes cross field far side. Oliveira's looking for the run. Knocked down there by Robert Shoemaker. The Jags cough it back up. No one home on that through ball. Shoemaker again. Another Laurel Highlands deflection. Back to Carson Seaman. And Jags win the ball back. In that center mid position, Chiprich angling down on the far side. Too far there for Andre Bekovac. The ball goes out of play. Mustangs reload again. To Oliveris. On the lob down on the far side. A little collision. Lucas regains. A good defense there from Andrew Getze. Mentioned his strength on the Jags back line. And now Chiprich, it seems like every play goes through Chiprich on the Jags side. Very involved again. Nice little run forward here. And the bouncer from Robert Kisner going into the keeper, Thatcher Wilson. Match remains tied at three. This one goes through Lucas. Back down on the far side to Alexander Day will scoop it up inside the box. Day with another boot back. Lemansky knocking it down, body there by Lucas and high in the air in Johns' direction, but headed back out again by Shoemaker. And Jags try to touch it ahead. Ball deflected over the far boundary and out off of Laurel Highlands going out. Another little chip going all the way through the 18-yard box. And rolled off of Thomas Jefferson and out. Off of Kisner going out. The Mustang throwing coming back. Tended there for Lemansky. Push back ahead. Lucas down to Johns on the run. He's not going to be able to catch up to this one. As Alexander Day comes way out. Header there from Radcliffe. Helped along by Lemansky. Over to Lasik. Back to Lucas again, who turned it over. Anthony Orlando says thank you very much. He'll heal it off to his left. And who else? Chiprich there. Got tripped up. No foul called. We play on and look out here. An opportunity coming back for Nico Johns. See if he can catch up with it. 
Solid defense there from William Marshall sending it out of play. John's going quickly back up to Lucas. Marshall fronting him. Lucas trying to stay with it. Lomanski tried to help out, but here's Googie on the other side for Thomas Jefferson. Mustangs attempt another slide tackle. Chippert stays with it. This one will roll back to Thatcher Wilson again. We'll scoop it up with 31-20. Left here in regulation time. And played back to center. Lomanski's there. We'll give and go with Lucas down to Lasik with a good run. Tim Lasik unable to outrun William Marshall. And we'll send it out on the near side. Played in again to Lomansky. Turned it over to Googie. Well, miscommunication there with Lucas. Now Radcliffe getting back defensively. Knocked down Googie. A foul called there on Harry. The one thing I will say about the officials, at least they're being consistent as far as the lack of not showing any cards. Did have a couple of incidents where twice Matt Lucas was pulled down inside the 18-yard box and a card wasn't shown. But the Mustangs have had a couple of aggressive fouls as well, and they haven't been carded either. As long as things are consistent on both sides, won't have too many complaints. When headed out of play. Be a corner kick here for the Jags. And once again, you'll have Jordan Chiprich taking it. And Chiprich puts it down. Half hour left in this match. Low line drive this time. Mustangs trying to head it out. Jags have lobbed a lot of those into the box, trying to take a different approach this time around. Chippers getting it back again. Lomansky in his face. Off a deflection, that's Mohedon. Just missing high. Goes back to Thatcher Wilson again. Definitely since fall is here. Chilly evening. And Mustang feeling a lot of jackets on. Took the Coach Chirpak approach tonight and wore shorts. Do have the long sleeve jersey on. And the press box a little warmer than it'd be outside. There's Harry Radcliffe. A little touchdown. Now Googie again. Up to Chiprich. Settled off on the far side. William Marshall back in Chiprich's direction. A nice little step in there and a clear for the Mustangs. Chiprich, though, getting it back. Blocked there by Seaman. Forward to Radcliffe. Sending it down the field. It should be offsides. They didn't whistle it down, or now they did. Lucas was offsides. Not they're going to let that continue on for a moment. Of course, you don't have VAR to review any decisions here in the high school game. And Mohedon was obstructed there by Diamond. Free kick here by the Jacks. The Andrew Getze to take it. 27-30. Left here in regulation time. Getze on the boots. Hamilton with the header. Laura Highlands looking for the clear. Hamilton going shoulder to shoulder there with Chiprich. Another little cross out in front. Goes out of play. Another Mustang goal kick, this time taken by Carson Seaman. Carson sends it down on the far side. When going over Lucas. Angled back over to Lomansky. 
There's Googie again. Up to Chip Rich. And down on the near side. Mohegan. With another cross. Mustangs knock it down. Lemansky a chip on the far side. Again, the Jags trying to keep it inside the Laurel Highland zone. Radcliffe setting it up. Coming back here, Nico Johns down to Lucas again. Matt Lucas down on the far wing. Staying with it, sends it off to his left. Johns never got the shot away. And good defense there again for Andrew Getze, slowing down the rush on the Laurel Highland side. Getze has really played well defensively tonight for Thomas Jefferson. Getze will take a free kick here for the Jags. Almost 15 minutes into the second half. Their lob going in Googie's direction. Chiprich leaving it down on the far side. And Seaman, an aggressive play defensively there on the run from Andre Bekovac. Goes off of Laurel Highlands and outs. You'll have another Chiprich corner kick for the Jags. This time Chiprich goes high again. Diamond got a piece of it, and Hamilton with the clear. Jags knock it back down again. That was Getze blocked by Lemansky. Sent up there again from Robert Kisner, and it'll roll back for the keeper, Thatcher Wilson. Thatcher looking for Lemansky. Kisner again, some pressure. Hamilton on the back line, keeping it alive, playing it forward again to Nico Johns. Touch through on the near side, LASIK back to Lemansky, and now LASIK again. Went off his shoulder a little high, knocked down there by William Marshall. He's trying to play it forward, but the Mustangs get control again. Lemansky, and now LASIK. Played back to Hamilton on the lob, looking for the run. From Lucas, trying to stay with it. Lucas, triple team went down, and we'll get a foul. Jag fans don't like it. There will be a free kick here for the Mustangs. And I'll put it down here about 34 yards from goal. Where the obstruction occurred. Just a two-player wall backed up, consisting of Mohedon and Googie. Radcliffe will take it from 34 yards out. Here's Harry on the run-up with the chip on the back side. A little header into the box and the scoop up there from Alexander Day. And one goal scored here in the second half. It was 3-2 Laurel Highlands at halftime, and Jordan Chiprich... Off the header at the 36-28 mark of the second half. Put this match even at 3-3. A couple of changes here for Laurel Highlands. Nico Johns coming out along with LASIK. We have Cooper Hunt coming back in. And it's Manny Oliveris also returning. To the 11 on the field on the Laurel Highland side. Radcliffe a header forward. Oliveris there with fresh legs. Couldn't track it down. Goes back to Carson Seaman. Angles it on the far side. That one went through. Caton Ruva Caba. Over to Lucas. Fighting for positioning. Looking for the cross. Off of Thomas Jefferson and out. On the Laurel Highlands corner. We Harry Radcliffe to take it. Twenty-two minutes left in regulation time. Harry goes high. It's going to go to the back post. Headed there from Hamilton, just missing again wide. That's twice Hamilton off the corners. 
has come close to getting goals for Laurel Highlands. The one right before halftime would have made it 4-2, to two, and that one would have put the Mustangs up 4-3. to three. He scored from that position in prior years, does have one goal in the 2021 campaign. Googie pushes it up on the far side over to Luke Geiger. Geiger going low to who else? Chiprich. Orlando a touch. Back to William Marshall. And a good break up there from Harry Radcliffe who kind of ran into a wall as Orlando gets possession back on the Thomas Jefferson side. And that one sent high from Geiger and out. And the Mustangs get it back almost midway through the second half. Match still tied at three. Mustangs send it down to Cooper Hunt on the near side. Try to angle it off there to Ben Diamond. Misplayed it. Jags get another throw in here from Marshall. Bounces it in to Mohedon on the near side. An angled Googie. Was fronting Wilson. He was able to make the save, but Googie again showing the pressure there on the Thomas Jefferson side. Sent down on the far wing. And Googie around it. Yanoski trying to keep it alive on the Laurel Highland side. Jags keep possession again. Played back here to Geiger. A little step in there on the poke from Seaman. And Diamond and Lemansky helping that one out for just a moment. A little step back in, though, on the Jag side, and Ben Diamond pulling it back to Oliveris. Headed back at the midfield. Geiger stepping back up. Orlando touching it ahead. Look out here. Mohedon got pulled down inside the box, and we're going to get a foul. Mohedon went down, and that was pretty heavy contact. And they will put it down here for a penalty kick. I think you had to call that. And now Googie an opportunity to give Thomas Jefferson the lead back. Googie the senior against the sophomore keeper Thatcher Wilson. It's the third penalty kick we've had tonight. Mustangs have taken two. They're one for two. The first of the night for the Jags, so Googie from 12 yards out against Thatcher Wilson. And getting helped off the field there was Mohedon, who was injured inside the 18-yard box on the foul. I hope Mohedon's okay. Here we go, match tied at three. Googie to give Thomas Jefferson the lead back on the blast and beats Wilson on the near side. So Googie getting his 11th goal of the season, has two goals and one assist tonight. And Thomas Jefferson goes on top four to three off the penalty kick at the 1926 mark of the second half. 4-3 lead for the Jags. And you really couldn't fault the penalty kick getting called there. It was obvious contact inside the box. Especially when you consider the fact the Mustangs were awarded two already tonight. There's no way you could see the referee's not awarding one to Thomas Jefferson there. What was a very similar to play to what we saw on the same side of the field twice in the first half. Yanoski taking the throw in. Googie finds it again. So you have Googie out there looking for a hat trick. Now for Thomas Jefferson. Chiprich also looking for a hat trick. Both Chiprich and Googie with braces tonight. And Lucas... 
with two goals and an assist, also looking for the hat trick. Seven goals already in this match. Rova Caba sending it out of play on the far side. Game's been physical as well this evening. If the Jags hang on, they draw even with Laurel Highlands atop the conference where the Mustangs would have the edge based on wins. But it really sets up a big match for the Mustangs on Saturday against Trinity. Laurel Highlands hoping they can get a few more back in this one and take it. And here's Cooper Hunt with some empty space ahead was unable to bring it down cleanly to set up a real scoring opportunity. And there's Geiger sending it into the Mustang bench. Rova Kaba will hand it off here to Yanoski to take the throw in. So the Mustangs playing from behind again. They were down 2-1 to one in the first half after the Jordan Chipridge goal, but then got two unanswered before halftime. And like to end the second half, like the end of the first half. Had two unanswered to start the second half from the Jags. A roller coaster game. Hamilton sending it ahead. Over Oliveris. Hunt trying to track it down. Again played over the near boundary and out. And Ben Diamond will bounce it back in Oliveris. Over to Hunt. Good defense there from Marshall. Keeping his position. Lemansky stepping back up. Joey between defenders. Put it on to Matt Lucas. Couldn't keep the handle. Here's Anthony Orlando back through center. Orlando with a lot of Mustangs around. Hamilton trying to little body bump. Googie there for the Jags. A little touch off from behind. Jags trying to work it into the box. Mustangs headed back out. And a blast going wide there from Geiger. Be a goal kick here for Laurel Highlands. Now the Mustangs have to watch the clock. 16-14 left in regulation time, and Laurel Highlands down a goal at 4-3. to three. Thatcher Wilson will take the goal kick. Knocked down here by Nico. Push back. And Joey Lemansky looking for Matt Lucas again. Lucas finds it, goes low. Played from behind, Lemansky. Headed there by William Marshall. A little scrum here on the near side, and they're going to get Lemansky for a little push on Nathan Powell. I think Powell came in for Mohedon after Mohedon got injured. Mustangs headed up to Nico Johns again. He's played up the field looking for Ratcliffe. And again sent away. On the far wing again, Harry looking for the run with Marshall defending. Played back over to Lucas and now Harry again. Can he keep it in play? Yes, he does for now. Googie comes over and knocks it out of play. It will be a throw in here for Laurel Highlands. Radcliffe goes quickly. Back into Lucas. We'll head her out in front. John's on the doorstep. And it's a lob back there by Robert Kisner out of play. It'll be another Mustang throw in. Laurel Highlands getting a little pressure on in this possession. Radcliffe another lob. Going to the top of the box, Lemansky, a touch off of a deflection just going wide. This will be another corner kick for Laurel Highlands. Lemansky to put it down again. Been a nice sequence here for Laurel Highlands. Let's see if they can get a result. Lemansky going high. Jags headed out. Mustangs trying to keep possession. A little blast coming back. I think that was Hamilton on the far side. Sent it high and wide. So Mustangs generating a couple of shots. 
A couple of chances in front of Alexander Day. But the Jags still hanging on to a one goal lead with 13.30 left here in regulation time. Hamilton another header. Cooper Hunt on the near boundary. Touched off to Lemansky. Low ball coming forward. Lucas touches it down to Johns. And William Marshall taking the safe route. Sends it out, but quickly back in from Hunt. A give and go there with Johns. And again, Kisner sends it out of play there on the Thomas Jefferson side. Hunt to work it back in again. Bounced in over to Lomansky. Joey double teamed. Jags were the last to touch it. Joey to reload. High lob headed there by Johns. Radcliffe keeps it alive. Googie on the other side, a touch. And the Jags cleared back to center again. Let's go over the near boundary and out for Laurel Highlands. Throw in with 12-21 left in regulation. At this point, the Mustangs would love to see an extra session. Hamilton going cross field on the far side over to Yanoski. Caleb, nice ball, playing it forward. Cooper Hunt is there. Jags send it out. Hunt to reload again quickly. Lobbed into Johns. Double teamed. Plays it back. Touch there from Diamond. Again sent high and out there by Thomas Jefferson defensively. Mustangs lob it back in, no one home. Jags try to break back. I'll go to Ian Hamilton and let it go back to Thatcher Wilson, and we'll see a little tactic shift here as long as the score remains 4-3. to three. You think on the Thomas Jefferson side, you don't see as many guys springing forward now at this juncture of the match, up 4-3, to three, doing everything they can to protect the back line and provide as much defensive support as possible. Rubakava, tough ball there. Lost it out of play. Jags come back quickly here. Googie, nice job to body it down. Lob it back. Hamilton, a header back to Wilson. Thatcher plays it out to Joey Lomansky. Jags again find it. Wilson, edge of the box. We'll take it out with 10.40 to play. It's getting chilly tonight. Here's Ben Diamond. Over to Lomansky. Sent off on the far side. Rova Caba. And no one up ahead. Mustangs not completing those passes to set up some of these scoring opportunities like we saw in the first half. And you wonder, the guys are getting a little gassed out there. Imagine the busy week of soccer. It's hard to believe these guys are going to play a non-conference match tomorrow against University High after, and Radcliffe needs to be careful there, slam the ball down. That could have been a yellow. It's still surprised these guys are going to play a non-conference match tomorrow with Trinity coming up on Saturday. What's going to be even a more important conference game with the Mustangs can't hang on here today. Free kick taken by Getze. Headed off the back line. Sent down by Lomansky. Over to Nico Johns. And now Joey again. Those two play catch. Joey finds it again. Low ball coming forward and... Sent out. John Belke asking, is this soccer or Olympic diving? <laughs> We've seen a couple of dives tonight, but it hasn't been too bad. Here's Hamilton. Over to Lomansky. I've seen worse, John. Ben Diamond to take the throw in. 
Over to Hamilton and now Diamond again. Again, the Mustangs have to watch the clock. 8.40 left in regulation. Diamond pushing it up the field. Intended there for Harry Radcliffe. Body down there by Carson Seaman trying to set up Lucas on the run down the far side. Matt Lucas will pull it back. Needs a little help. Jags touch it out. And no, they don't. Off of Lucas and outs. Awarded here on the throw-in to Thomas Jefferson. As we go under 8-10 left. A lot back in. Jags keep possession again. Back to Carson Seaman. Had his pocket pick. Look out here. Good run for the Jags. That's going to be obstruction. Ian Hamilton stepping in and in a way, that was a good play because you could have had a one-on-one -on -one scoring opportunity coming back. Neen kind of did what he had to do there defensively to slow down the run. Now the Mustangs can get some support back. Getze takes the free kick. Good lob out in front. Jags couldn't generate a shot, though. If they got an insurance goal here, pretty much turn out the lights. And it goes to 5-3. to three. Ball ruled out off of Thomas Jefferson and out. Lucas will go quickly. We'll fire it down on the near side. Harry Radcliffe down on the near wing. And that's going to be ruled off of Radcliffe and out, and you had Radcliffe really getting obstructed there by Andrew Getze. As Getze body blocked Radcliffe from getting the ball around the near corner flag. 6.30 to play. You're right, James Hersick. We need a goal, guys, on the Laurel Highland side. Set ahead. Radcliffe trying to spin forward. Jags clear the zone. We'll get a lot of that here. Over the final six minutes plus. Thomas Jefferson is trying to protect a one-goal lead. You kind of sense, I was talking to Dr. Mike Coolish, Thomas Jefferson's head coach before the match, the importance of this one. He said, hey, we lose this match today. As far as winning a section title, we're done. We need a win. And they were stressing the importance coming in. They've gotten a nice effort. They've rallied from a couple of deficits in this game. We're down one to nothing, also down three to two at halftime, and now lead it four to three. Come to play here tonight on the road. But the Mustangs not done yet. 5.27 to play. They'll get a free kick here from Harry Ratcliffe just outside the box on the far side. Two-player wall in front of Harry. They might back that wall up a little bit. Looks to be a little closer than 10 yards. And the Jags will do this as well just to stall a little time by bringing that wall up a little bit, maybe by 10 or 15 seconds before Radcliffe's given the all clear. they will take it here on the free kick. A little action out in front. Googie had the header out. Oliveira's trying to knock it down there for the Mustangs and keep possession. Manny trying to spin it back between two defenders. And turning and clearing, there is Robert Shoemaker on the Thomas Jefferson side, just sending it out of play. Radcliffe goes quickly again, lobs it back into the box. Mustangs had a Lemansky on the doorstep, never got the ball his way. And once again, the Jags clearing it out. And now what do we have here? Just a reposition on the throw-in now from Radcliffe with 4.32 to play. Another lob going down to Lucas, fighting along the goal line, crossed out in front, save made there by Alexander Day. Deflects it out of play for a Mustang corner kick. Radcliffe has it teed up already, set to go. Radcliffe from the far corner. Mustangs have kicked it into high gear. Radcliffe going short this time, and it goes off of Oliveris, I believe, going out. Be a goal kick here for Thomas Jefferson as the Mustangs, the last to touch it, going out. 3.57 to play. Jags still on top, 4-3. to three. 
Andrew Getze taking this goal kick. Googie knocks it down, but couldn't clear. Mustangs get back on it. Lemansky a touch forward. And Laurel Highlands has shifted Carson Seaman from the back line. They now have Carson up front, bringing some defenders forward here for the final 326. Lucas on the far side, knocks it down on the far wing. Lucas fighting for positioning. Last touch going out off of Logan Yeshko on the Thomas Jefferson side. Lucas on the reload, body down by Oliveras. Back to Lucas, looking for the cross. Goes to the top of the box, and Ben Diamond's shot was blocked down. Deflects back into the near corner where Cooper Hunt will let it roll out of play. Should be a throw in here for the Mustangs. 2.51 to play. Are they going to reverse it? No. Hunt given the all clear. Touch there from Carson Seaman. The Jags with possession for now. Lemansky trying to step in, but Thomas Jefferson able to play it back to center. Retreating here is Ian Hamilton. Mustangs only about two center backs back defensively with nine players forward here for the final 230, looking for the game-tying goal. Now you have an odd man rush coming up here for Thomas Jefferson. Yetko off on the near wing. And they'll cross it out in front, and with the insurance goal, it's sent it out in front again by Jordan Chiprich, who gets the hat trick. That's the hat trick for Chiprich. And Laurel Highlands had to get aggressive there. Can't fault them at all. But Thomas Jefferson taking advantage of the odd man break. Chiprich getting his ninth of the season. And the Jags. With 2.17 to play, go up 5-3. to three. Laura Hiley has had no one back. There's Googie playing it up to William Marshall. For the Mustangs, seven-game winning streak will end tonight. These two teams will split the regular season Series Laurel Highlands winning at TJ, and TJ is going to win here at Laurel Highlands. Here's Lucas fighting in the box, trying to stay with it. 139 to play. Nico Johns looking to reload. Mustang still showing some fight despite being down two. Lucas went down again. This should be a free kick. Got to keep your cool here. Got to keep your cool, and we're going to get a card. They're going to push the wall back. Play stopped with 119 to play. This actually might be a part of the new rule that was instituted a couple of seasons back on some of these free kicks in the final five minutes of regulation. They stopped the clock. Now they're going to wind it again with everyone set. And Lucas will take the free kick from 20 yards out and has blasted it too high. So the Mustangs, again, will see their seven-game winning streak end. They'll drop to 9-2 and two overall, 7-2 and two in conference play. The Jags improved to 6-1-2 and two in the conference, 9-1-2 and two overall. And you'll likely get a Bell Vernon win tonight at Albert Gallatin, which would improve the Leps to 6-2. and two. Trinity hosting Uniontown. They'd improve to 5-2-2. Two and two. Again, the Hillers will be here at Mustang Field on Saturday for another key conference showdown with Laurel Highlands. And really, it'll be a must-win game for both schools. They want to have a chance at winning the section title. We've started to see some separation between Laurel Highlands, TJ, Bell Vernon, and Trinity, and the rest of the pack for the four playoff spots in the conference. But important to get one of those top two seeds, get a better opportunity to play at home in the first round of the WPIL playoffs. 18 seconds left in this one. Going to battle on both sides, but Thomas Jefferson here in the second half Outscoring Laurel Highlands 3 to nothing, And the Jags will take a 5-3 win tonight over the Laurel Highlands Mustangs. So well fought on both sides. And Thomas Jefferson wins it over Laurel Highlands by a score of 5-3. Have to thank our live stream sponsors tonight for making... 
our live video broadcast possible, including the Sprouse Insurance Group and Agent David Hughes, United Bank, Davis and Davis Attorneys at Law, Smith Lewis Chess CPAs in Uniontown, Jason Scott, South Union Township Ship. South Union Township Supervisor, Southwestern Gastrointestinal Specialist, SWGI in Uniontown, Zebley Mahalov and White, Uniontown Business and Bankruptcy Attorneys, UPMC Centers for Rehab Services on Wayland Smith Drive, Jim Burns Director, South Union Township Supervisors, Robert Schiff Bauer, Rick Vernon, and Jason Scott, and Chessler's Fine Furniture, Pittsburgh Road, Uniontown, in front of the Fayette Plaza, where customers send their friends. So, well fought. Match on both sides, 5-3 to three, your final score, Thomas Jefferson over Laurel Highlands. Tonight's game was brought to you as a joint cooperative venture featuring Township Supervisors Bob Schiffbauer, Rick Vernon, and Jason Scott, Atlantic Broadband, Armstrong Cable, and our friends at CUTV, including Gary Smith. Again, I'm Brian Morozak with Jerry DuPay. Thomas Jefferson defeats Laurel Highlands 5-3. to three. This has been a South Union Township Sports Network presentation.